But let's actually check what Diablo has to offer. And this was the release trailer of the Mercenaries, but this was this. A new region and game feature. So I might check this out after this as well. Let's first go into this. Suffering. Desolation. Horror. This is the road we know in Sanctuary. However, some of us have taken a different path. Bound by secrecy, ready to stand and fight for those who seek us out. My shield is your protection! There was a time we fought the vilest of Sanctuary. You fools get uglier and uglier. Until we were left with only our inner demons. But the return of hatred has pulled us back into the light. Yeah! Your blood feeds my blade! And though we now wait, watching from the shadows, we cannot escape who we are. Why we fight. Please, no! Stay away! Or the fury that burns within damn. us. Damn. Oh, damn. I have your back. I will not let you down. Stay back! See it. Shoot it. Catch! Strength in numbers. I am your guardian. I am your redemption. I am your vengeance. I am your rage. We are the pale hand, and we are the reason you need never fight alone. All right. That was it. Demon Wings cosmetic demon. Eh. All this stuff. No, but okay. Hold up first. So. I actually really enjoyed the, the thing they came up with your mercenaries. So basically, the guys fighting with you now, right? Or you can, I guess, mercenaries, so you can pay for them to fight with you in like dungeons and shit. This guy over here, that's like a mini Diablo, right? Some, some dude that turns into fire. I have your back. And this is the Rage Lady. So this is us, the Sorceress, standing here, and she does shit while we attack. I wonder how this works um, actually in-game. Where are we here? Oh, it was the, the rogue oh, down there. Okay, so we're just standing next to them while they do shit. I will not let you down. Yeah, pretty much here. The druid, and then he's shooting. That's interesting. I like the idea a lot, actually. I think this is a very great addition to the game. That you now have just dudes you can buy that fight for you or with you or whatever. I like this a lot. I wonder how this works balance-wise. I guess it just means you can go to higher levels more easily because you have these dudes with you that fight with you. They seem to have some cool effects. Like the shield is very strong, I guess. That's this guy. Shoots fireballs. He was what went Renji. Meet your maker. This is all in the jungle, right? Vessel of hatred. This is okay. That's cool. Crowd control. Where are we? Oh, we are the, the Jaguar guy. Yeah. The new class. Catch. What's kind of funny though, compared to I was just watching PoE2 announcement trailer with a little bit of gameplay. D4 looks worse <laughs> than PoE2 for some reason, somehow. I don't know. It's weird. So they have some some sort of there's some defense uh, abilities, they have some AOE abilities, and just generally attacking. I wonder if you can actually give them direct orders. I am your guardian. Let's see. Why does it start again? What the? 
let's see if this new thing actually says something about it. I guess it does. Too loud, man. New region. Hatred, we travel south to Nahantu, a region with both deep ancient jungles and vast sprawling plains. It's the last stretch of land in Sanctuary's eastern continent, and we packed it full of experiences for every type of player. From what I've heard last time, um, these are just re reskinned existing enemies. Mostly. They're not really any new mechanical wise experiences enemies. for every type From of player. From what we've seen so far. In this expansion, there's a whole lot to explore under the dark canopy of Nahantu. Nahantu is the southernmost region of the eastern continent that Diablo 4 has been taking place in. It's the last region that we haven't visited yet so far in the game, but it is one that we've been to before in Diablo. There's lots of new areas. Oh, we have right. six in total. True. Four of them are jungle themed, and then we have two that are Red Rock Canyon, but each one of them has their own unique identity. When you first arrive in Nahantu, you're in this place called Lingering Hatred. This is a high treetops canopies where you're almost walking amongst the branches high above the jungle floor. Imagine a thick canopy that the light is just barely that looks really cool. through. The whole area has been infected by this thing called the Hollows infestation. The Hollows are a new enemy that's associated with Mephisto. They themselves are kind of like a tar-like substance creature born straight out of the depths of hell. It <laughs> feels a little twisted. There's a sickness to the area itself. Humans have ventured into this deep part of the jungle where there's all this poisonous plants and, and flora. The dregs actually started experimenting with eating these hallucinogens, and it put them into this aggressive psycho rage. The dregs were pretty fun because we were able to push more variety in the monster family. You have one of these tall dregs and then half of a body of another dreg on top of it, <laughs> kind of controlling it and telling it where to I go. I mean, the design is really cool. Poisonous bombs at the player. When Not you come across it, it's very memorable. And then we've also Good got evening, the John. area of Tenganze, where you've How's got the Tenganze Plateau, which is full of these red rocked plateaus and canyons. I mean, it does look cool. Not gonna lie. It does look very good. Although, again, it's weird. When I compare to what I was watching, as I said, Perfect said 2 earlier, the trailer, it looks very different. But I think PO2 actually looks better because it looks sharper. This still has some sort of. The colors are just better in PoE2, I feel like. These are not bad, but it feels something feels a little bit blurry. I can't put my finger on what it is. Might just be the game capture thingy here, but maybe the game does look better when you actually play it, but... The gameplay footage for PoE2 did look much better. Imagine getting up above the land. Those gigantic walls have pockets inside where monsters could live. It offered up a lot of opportunity to bring back a monster family like the Lacunae. We're bringing them back in a new way here as a fully fleshed out monster family with multiple classes. What a more brute force looks like, what a caster looks like. They are very much apex predators and we're definitely in their territory. And then there's a little sub area called the Skittering Earth. The name alone makes your skin crawl. And it's bug infested but not really, and but you okay. can see how the bugs are destroyed. <laughs> And I'll be honest, looking at the new features of the expansion, I'm probably actually going to buy it. Really? That's saying something from you, man. <laughs> the jungles and kind of input their influence on it. Within the field of giants, you have these giants. What exactly do you like? Is it the mercenaries? These long dead demons that humans have begun to mine away at for their resources. While they've got a lot of use out of them, they're also toxic to the land around it. The notion of massive demons walking sanctuary a thousand years ago is really That is cool, actually. Plateau's like Titans. also got just this beautiful color scheme to the lighting. It's really lovely to be there. And then horrific at the same time. You know, it's great. The mercenaries, mercenaries. in Vessel of Hatred are a group of people who we like to describe as ordinary people with yeah. extraordinary skills. They Actually, have some good the stuff. same level of will to fight against the demons of hell. And there's four mercs that you can... As I said before, Season 5 really sort of marked, I think, the point where Diablo 4 is now a finished 1.0 release. And now with Vessel of Hatred and coming seasons, they are actually now adding cool new stuff. So going forward, I think it's going to be great.
and collect over the course of the campaign. It starts with Rahir, a blacksmith and a shield bearer, is a more defensive fighter. He's able to go in there and soak up damage, use his shield as a bulwark against the enemy. You meet him early on in the campaign, and he's one who introduces you to the mercenary network. You end up finding acquisition quests for three other mercs that you can find throughout the course of the story. Subo, the drunken archer, is going to work really drunken well archer. for people who want some I like out of the main guy. melee in the, the back, guy. offering utility and that kind of range support. Then we have Ariana, a Berserker Crone, who's a melee combat fighter, close range. She's got a really cool combat meter, a, a massacre meter, where you need to keep killing enemies to get the meter to be filled. <laughs> okay, that's She's cool. got a bunch of really interesting utility skills that you can kind of build in. Finally, we have the demon child, Aldkin, who's a Aldkin. magic user who can transform himself from human form to demon form and join you in combat. Damn. There's this really great reinforcement that, that's, ability that guy's where cool. you I can like that. take one of the mercenaries. Hold on, hold on, blah, 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 blah. not so fast, lady. Let me, let me see, what's going on here? Roll wait, wait, what is that? Mercenaries, okay. Variana. Reinforcement. Reinforcements will emerge during combat and execute their skill at an opportunity of your choosing. Wait, they will emerge during combat? How do I cast these guys? I thought they would run with me all the time when I hire them. Spins rapidly to one certain location, constantly inflicting bleeding damage all five seconds. Okay. Travel to the den. What is this? Oh, <laughs> do you see how they actually hide the level? <laughs> you see this? This is just a, this is just a thing put over it. Because we, we sort of have soft confirmed that the level will be changed to 60 max, probably. From what we've seen so far, 60 is going to be the max cap now. And there's no... I guess it's level... Yeah, that's going to be 60 then, I guess. Apparently they will have skill trees and you can set them up to do specific actions in specific times. Specific actions in specific times. This is like a... Like an action event, when an enemy is sort of dying, you can click something. That's kind you of can weird. take one of the mercenary skills and attach it. Oh, there it says it. Ability will be cast when player casts rapid fire. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay, that's actually kind of cool. So it depends on your abilities that you have. Oh, I see. This is my this is my uh, action bar basically down here. Yes, and I can set something on that. Oh yeah, okay. I see. When I cast rapid fire, she will do the rowing. That's cool actually, because that basically means that's a very clever way to put more abilities into your bar without adding more actual skills, because technically you just now have two skills on one action point bar bar point whatever. Like whenever I do this, I basically do two spells at once, or two skills. That's kind of clever way to do this, actually. I like this. Because I would hate to do the micromanagement. Personally, some people would probably like it. I don't. I wouldn't want to micromanage, micromanage the mercenary and my character. ...to one of your powers, so that when you use that skill, it calls them in to do a specific skill. Yeah, okay. So. With the mercenaries for Vessel... Alkin will periodically lose control of his demonic curse and transform into a ferocious demon. Alkin's demon form is either shadow or fire based on skill tree choices. Transforming has a 33% chance to inadvertently summon a hostile elite demon. Oh, that's funny. Metamorphosis. Oh yeah, you have a mini skill tree. That's cool. Oh, Maxwell will have to put a lot on a lot of work into their website to all and all this, so you can make builds. Because I think, depending on how strong these things are, but this has this like firewall inferno thing, which can be really strong AOE wise. I feel like um, I think some builds could probably be made with the mercenaries. Like you have to have Alkin, for example, for build X Y Z to make it really strong. I guess this. Unless they don't buff you in any sense, they just have abilities they cast. Maybe. Love hatred. One of the things we are expanding on. Flame surge. Moderate damage. 
Selecting this skill will change Alkin's basic attack and his metamorphosis perk will turn him into a fire demon. Basic attack, fireball. Oh, these are tied to the... Wait, no. Oh, that's the basic attack. No mind. I thought this was tied to my fireball. You may only select one skill. Yeah, sure. One is the skill tree. For Diablo 3, you had a very basic type of... Ghostly souls that haunt enemies. These souls follow targets for 10 seconds, dealing moderate damage per second. Well, that's like the, what are they called again in The Hungering Souls, in that sequel? Shadow Demon. That's cool that you can actually switch his damage between Shadow and Fire. So you can make a full Shadow Demon. Do you think we can actually make a Shadow Sorcerer? In this expansion? Maybe? That would be cool. With Altkin as your Sorcerer Companion. Also, this gives a lot of possibilities, doesn't it? Let's say you, you run the Sorcerer and then you have the double Sorcerer with Altkin over here. But you can also go with Sorcerer and you have the Barbarian guy that gives you a shield that makes you tankier. That gives a lot of possibilities for build, doesn't it? Unless this doesn't really do shit. Like, let's say this is just an attack that gives a little bit of more fire damage in AoE and then it doesn't really fucking matter. I want this to really have a huge impact. Like if I pick this, this has a huge impact on the build, because that would be great. And it will really matter which mercenary you take. I hope it, they really make this strong enough. ...of mercenary, but this time you can actually push a little bit more into the skill tree and make the mercenary the way you would want to play. Going through each mercenary progression... Hold up, hold up, hold up. What are you saying here? Um, she charge. Okay, classic. Going through Penitence. Which one is that? This one. Near rare are slow by 40% for 4 seconds. Okay, I want to see down here the, the crazy ones. That's just nice addition, I guess. Through each mercenary progression arc. Gain 5% increased armor. Pretty mid. And outfitting their skill tree so that it... Provoke. I can't see the mouse, so I guess it's this one he's currently pointing at. Taunts enemies around you and you gain 5% damage reduction per target taunted up to 50%. Okay, yeah, that is definitely strong. It's complimentary to your... Trader. Strikes you ground three times, pulling you by enemies to find strike also stuns enemies. Okay. It looks like they're going the right direction. These are not insane, but they are strong. Three seconds stun. Does this have a cooldown? Oh yeah, it does. 22 seconds. Oh, okay. That's pretty long. You seem to have long cooldowns. Character build? I think that's where the fun in the mercenary system really lies. I guess before we go there, let's just recap real fast. I like this a lot. I like the mercenary idea a lot. That's a very cool idea. I'm really bi a big fan of this. Uh, I haven't seen this also before. Why am I smoking crack? Was this in the game before? Maybe even Diablo game and I'm just tripping? Might be. Um, but I like the idea a lot of having other dudes with you that have cool abilities that also are very versatile. Um, or like very diverse, I should say, rather. I don't know what the report is, never talked about this, but anyway. Um, again, the only way I see this being useless or being fucked up if, is if these are not really strong. Like this lower part of the mercenary thing for your mercenaries, whoops, that needs to be really strong. Now this had what, well, three seconds stun every 22 seconds. That's okay. Not good enough, I think. It's not bad, but it's not good enough to really make a difference. Unless it had, for example, no cooldown. Okay, maybe a five second cooldown. And then you can sort of spam his stun with a spammable ability. Although everyone will pick this then because perma stun lock. I get it, but let's just say, what was the other one actually? Shield charge. Uh, provoke. Uh, 25 seconds again for the taunt. Yeah. I guess they are a little bit afraid that it sort of gives you perma stun or perma DR reduction if you if you spam the or put these on spammable abilities because you can put them on your abilities, right? 
But if you really want, if this really should be strong and used, then they need to be very strong. Like the, these things need to be insane, I think. They need to be so strong that they make or break some builds. That's what I'm thinking. Three to your character build. I think that's where the fun in the mercenary system really lies. All right, what we got? Dark Citadel. The Dark Citadel is a new in-game feature that's coming in Vessel of Hatred. It's an entirely cooperative player oh, yeah. experience. All the mechanics within it are based around you working together with your party oh, members to solve cool. the challenges and face the first Khazra hordes within. One of the outcomes of the Mage Wars is this giant crater and all the souls that were kind of lost in it from those wars. The goal of the first Khazra, who are kind of the original Khazra, they're using the powers within the citadel found within this crater to perform experiments to try and bring back their dark god. Only recently, people have started going missing. They head into the Khazar region, they banned. disappear never to be seen again. So it's clear that whatever they're planning is about to come to fruition, and your job as the players to get in there and stop it. Citadels are a place where we take what is the best part of Diablo, combat, and we test it in a different way which is adding in cooperative mechanics that you have to manage on top of that. For example, a boss has an attack, and as a player, you have to collect an item that allows you to reflect the attack back at him. So there's a little bit of a twitch level mechanic there where you actually have to time your reaction shot. What's interesting about it is when you get multiple people in there, we're each responsible for reflecting that shot once, so we all have to sort of master the timing of that move. You can't do that kind of thing without coordinating as a team, and that's sort of the example of what that Citadel is cool. gameplay feels like. When designing the Citadel, we designed a lot of really cool bosses. And so one of the things that we did is we took that design and made like armor sets for each of the classes. That way you feel like you took their armor and you feel like you're wearing oh. a little bit of them after your victory. <laughs> we also have a currency that's dedicated to the Citadel. Of course we have a currency, because what would Diablo be without currencies for literally everything? Or materials for that matter. Right? <clears throat> but is this different? These tabs? Is this not split up in keys? And elixirs? Or am I smoking? <laughs> See how they <laughs> um, covered all the, the levels again. So we don't know exactly what the level cap is. It's definitely going to be 60, man. Um, they wouldn't put in this effort if it would be different. So 60 is not the max, probably. Where, as you play through, a vendor can be interacted with to buy custom cosmetics that are unique to the Citadel. You can play with two people, but the, the ideal experience is for four. But in order to facilitate that, we've built an all-new Party Finder feature. And the community has been pretty vocal about wanting this for a long time. It made a lot of sense to us to pair it with this new Citadel mode. It really is an activity. It party Finder feature. Oh, so you list a party and then people can join it. I see. Yeah, but does it have in-game voice? Oh, voice chat. There we go. Good. Otherwise, that would be useless. And the community has been pretty vocal about wanting this for a long time. It made a lot of sense to us to pair it with this new Citadel. Yeah, that is cool. It really is an activity that's geared towards people who love to play together with their friends or with strangers and enjoy that cooperative gameplay. I cannot wait for players to get into the world. I'm really just excited. And one thing you got to give Blizzard credit for, though, is they know how to make the... I don't even phrase it. The peripherals around the new mechanic. Like, they didn't just throw in the, the Citadel thing with the co-op. They also said, okay, with this, we actually need the Party Finder to make it flow better. So they really know how to smooth these things. Smooth them out. And I like this a lot. Party Finder is cool, for sure. And this co-op looks really cool because it's not just you coming together. You have more power and you just hit bosses. You actually have to do mechanics as a team and you have to sort of go back and forth. That's really cool. I like this a lot. This is really looking very good. Right, this expansion does look very all good. All the little hidden storytelling elements that the team has fit in. So there's interesting things to find and see and discover around every corner. And it's just a really great experience getting to explore in a hunt. Yeah. 
Yes, that looks really good. Not gonna lie, I like this a lot. Um, I'm very much even more hyped for um, the expansion. Now, what are people saying? Let's see if this new grouping tool will help grouping for Ubuntu and the bosses. That's correct. That would be great. Oh, yeah, hell, that would actually be very good. Yeah, if you can just be for Ubuntu Mended, party find everything. <laughs> Asking too much there, yeah, my friend. Accept the rate. I hope there's enough pushback that they add a solo option. Hmm. I mean, you don't have to play it, right? It's like PvP. You don't have to play it. But I get the idea you want to have your cosmetics and then you have to play with other people. Some people just hate playing with others, I guess. <laughs> I mean, there might be some... I was actually thinking while they mentioned this, this depends a lot on the community. How they operate with these things. Um, sometimes that can be a bit tough. <laughs> Which, especially with strangers getting together with them. Then again, you don't have to play, right? Um, it's fine. Totally fine. 